Hello and welcome, my name is Alex. So this is part two in a series where we remake the Draw Climber app in Unity. If you haven't watched part one, I'd strongly recommend watching that first, as part two we'll be building on the project we created in part one. So in today's video we're going to be focusing on how to create the climber. Uh, in the previous one we worked out how to draw 3D models in Unity, and by the end of this video we should have a climber avatar that moves along a plane using our drawings. So previously I said we'd be polishing off the draw functionality, so let's do that now. Okay, so in the Draw Climber game, the drawing action is confined to a fixed window. Also, the drawing made isn't three-dimensional. It only becomes 3D when it's applied to the climber. So let's implement those features now. So let's first make our drawing 2D. So this is simple enough to do. If we open up the Draw Mesh script, after we've created the drawing game object in our scene, we just alter its local scale so it's zero on the z-axis. So now the drawing won't have any depth. Uh, next I'm going to alter the colour and shader for my drawing, um, so I'm going to make it a kind of charcoal grey colour and then I'm going to change our material so it's using an unlit shader. Right, let's just test that out. Okay, cool. Alright, so adding in the draw area. So let's add a second camera into our scene and overlay it onto our main camera. So when the player is playing the game, the main camera will be moving about, following the climber. But if we have our draw code linked to the main camera, as it moves, the drawing will mess up a bit. So instead we want our draw code attached to our second camera, which will be completely static. So in the player input component of the draw mesh object, change the camera reference to be the draw camera. So let's move the draw camera so it's nowhere near our main camera. Then change the far clipping plane to be 12. Right, now we need to create an area for our player to draw in. So add a quad into the scene, and let's set the draw camera as its parent. So scale it however you like, but make sure its Z position is 11. I'm also going to give it a semi-transparent material. Right, let's go back into Draw Mesh Script. Add a reference to the draw area from our scene. We only need to really access this mesh collider. And next, let's make a Boolean property that determines whether the cursor is within the bounds of our draw area. Then if we go into our draw curve routine and change our while loop from while true to while is cursor in draw area. Right, let's go back into Unity. Uh, so add a mesh collider reference to your draw mesh script and let's hit run. Cool, so we can only really draw within the bounds of our area. Okay, let's construct the draw climber. So we need a cube and two cylinders. Let's add a cube to the scene and call it draw climber. Uh, now we'll drag the cube down to, from the hierarchy to the project tab. This will save as a prefab. Uh, open up the prefab and let's add in a cylinder. Uh, move and scale it. Uh, the Y part should be looking down the X axis. And then just add a second cylinder and place it on the other side. Right, now we need to add in game objects that will house the arm drawings. So add in an empty object, give it a mesh filter, a mesh renderer and a mesh collider. Uh, call it right arm, position it where the right cylinder is. And then create another arm object for the left side. All right. Now add in another empty game object, call it motor, so it's positioned to be 0, 0, 0. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. Uh, let's also set the Z rotation on our right arm to be 180. Okay, we'll need to make some changes to this in a moment, but for now, let's just go back into our draw mesh script. Okay, so we want to apply our drawing to the climber. So looking at the mesh we've drawn, its starting coordinates are minus 21.87, 2.24, and 0.5. So if we added this mesh as it is now to one of the climber arm objects, the drawing would be wildly offset from the position of the arm. So to fix that, we need to alter the mesh cords so that they are local to the climber arm. So we want to grab our drawing object from outside of the draw coroutine. So let's make drawing a member variable. And while we're at the top, we might as well add in some references to our climber arms. Okay, let's create a method. I'm going to call it redraw. Uh, now we want to reference the drawing mesh and we want to extract out the vertices array. Okay, now let's create a for loop to go through our vertices. Uh, we're going through to change the first vertex last, so I will start at 1 and we want to loop through the length of the array. So for each vertex we want to add the inverse of the first vertex. Then after the loop we set the first vertex to 0. Then reapply the vertices to the mesh. Okay, so when we finish the drawing, the drawing mesh will be applied to the climber arms. So we call redraw in the end draw method. Right, so let's get a couple of copies of the drawing mesh and attach them to the left and right arms. Then we won't need our drawings anymore, so we can destroy it. Right, let's go back into Unity and try this out. 
Okay, cool. So as you can see here, when we create a drawing, it's being applied to our climber. And when we look at in the scene view, you can see that the drawing looks to be positioned correctly and the scaling looks okay. Uh, we can even redraw in the box and the new drawing is applied. A couple of issues are the shading on the drawing is not quite right. And now if we click outside of the draw area, it produces an error. Uh, so let's resolve this. Let's start with the error. So we want to kind of lock and key. So let's create a Boolean, call it has drawing started. Then at the top of the draw coroutine, we'll set it to true. Uh, then in end draw, we'll check if has drawing started is false, then return. Uh, then just set the ball back to false. Right, so we want some simple flat surface shading on the drawing. What that means in code is to give our mesh a set of normals. I won't go into too much detail about normals, but a normal is a directional vector and it defines how the light affects the face of a model. So Unity can natively calculate these normals. Uh, but if we try that now, it doesn't quite really produce the right effect. It looks more like a sort of smooth shading. And we can see some clipping artifacts on the mesh. Uh, so we could try and calculate ourselves, but I think instead we'll utilize the Pro Builder package to calculate our normals. So to do that, first we have to import the package from the package manager. It should be inside the Unity registry. Right, so in the draw mesh at the top, we need to include the Pro Builder and Pro Builder mesh operations. Uh, now at the bottom, let's make a method to calculate our normals. So for this to work, we have to import our drawing mesh into a Pro Builder mesh. Then we just ask Pro Builder to calculate the normals. We probably don't even need to say normals.calculate normals um, because when we refresh, it should automatically calculate those normals for us, but I'm going to leave it in anyway. Okay, so we need to call this method in endraw, so call calculate normals, then just copy the mesh normals across. Right, let's try that out. So draw a shape. Okay, cool. So we have some nice flat shading on the arms. We just want to change the color a little bit, so open up the climber prefab. In your project window, just create a material, call it charcoal, and just apply it to the climb arm objects. And while we're here, let's just create a color for the climber body. Okay, let's have a bit of fun with physics. So in our scene, add in a ground plane, scale it up on the x-axis. Now open up the climber prefab. So select everything in the hierarchy and give it a rigid body component. So now all our object's motion is affected by the Unity physics engine, though we still have the transformation hierarchy. So we want all of our cylinders to stick to the same relative position. So to do that, we can add fixed joints. So in the draw climber, add in a fixed joint component, set the connected body to the left cylinder, then do the same for the right cylinder. Okay, those components are now connected. So I'm going to make sure those objects are secure by adding in joints going in the opposite direction. Right, let's make something that moves. So add fixed joints to the climber arm objects and connect those to the motor. Now for the motor, add in a hinge joint, set the connected body to the draw climber, set the axis to zero, zero, minus one, disable auto configure connected, uh, enable the motor, then set the motor's target velocity to be 350 and set the force to be 300. Also for the draw climber rigid body under constraints, freeze the rotation in all axes. Right, let's try this out. Cool, that works pretty nicely. Uh, I think the arms are slightly off center. That's probably because we have a capsule collider attached to the cylinders. So let's remove those. Nice, the arms are staying in the center now. Also, probably a good idea to freeze the position of our rigid bodies on the Z axis, just so it doesn't drift across. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there for today. Thank you all for watching. In next week's video, we'll look at creating some of the terrain elements you can see in the Draw Climber game, and we'll look at creating an opponent the player can race against. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.